Hi, my name is Charlene Deal, and I am the author of a poetry collection called Lamentations, published a lot of years ago by Trout Lily Press, and a memoir, Out of Grief Singing, published by Signature Editions about uh, 10 years ago, I think. I'm also the parent of a little pile of chapbooks, most of them self-published. I think like most writers, I have been struggling over the last few months to not only navigate this emotional landscape of the pandemic, but also, I guess, to find words for it. For me, it's been a really odd juncture of frenetic busyness and a kind of hollow unreality factor. So um, I'm working on a new suite, uh, very much under construction, but I am going to rashly share a couple of poems from that suite. At this point in its life, it's called Sourdough Love, the Quarantine Poems. And for those of you who have similarly been bitten by the sourdough bug, I'm basically shaping the suite alongside the different stages of, uh, of creating a loaf of sourdough bread, which is my new passion. I'm gonna read two uh, pieces from this suite. The leavening stage. This first step, the leavening, is called by its French name. So begin by calling up crumbling medieval castles, vineyards, vast purple fields of lavender. There, you're ready. Start with the starter, obviously, but now you get to supercharge things and nobody can raise an eyebrow. Your starter needs to feast, so stir it up thick. And since transformation requires some privacy, hide it in a warm place for a couple of hours, actually maybe three. That's enough time to bundle up and take a long walk in the brittle cold. The sun dogs are chasing circles around the sun, the snow so bright it makes you squint. Pull the scarf up over your nose, walk yourself warm, let your mind wander where it wishes. Once you get home and shuck off all the layers, you can research the sky's exact shade. Today, it is Bleu de France. See how everything is tangled together? The patterns are more subtle than you will ever understand. Recover your living from its hiding place. It's ready. It's calling you. The auto lies stage. As a lover of words, you have to pause for a moment. Auto lies. The cutting apart of a self. Something is breaking itself down. Something is becoming something else. So clearly, this is going to require patience, hours, or a lifetime. Start by placing tulips on the counter. Beauty is the overseer here. Put a large bowl on the food scale. Weigh out the levain, weigh out the water, weigh out the flour. Using the Danish whisk that your sister gave you, mix everything together. It's a sticky, ragged mess. Cover it up and leave it be. Sure, it's still daytime, but run yourself a deep bath and add some lavender for good measure. Clip the tulips which have begun to droop. Think about spreading those petals onto the surface of the water but decide instead to put the aging stems in a narrow mouth jar. Set them nearby to oversee you. Slide into the steam. Soak away your neck tension, the tightness in your abdomen. Rest your eyes. Let your unmarked shadows fly free. Make them welcome. Say, hello, hello, hello. Say. I'm glad you're continuing to call me. Say, thank you for your secrets. Say, who are we now? Out of the bath, it's time to give some love to that mystery digesting itself in your kitchen. Tie on your mother's apron. 
clear a big space on your countertop and dump out the dough. Wet your hands, poke holes all over the surface and sprinkle on the salt. As you knead it in, remind yourself that adding salt too early can disrupt the transformation of a human self too. Now the fun part. Lift up the sticky dough, let it sag under its own weight, and then really slap it down on the countertop. Make a racket, rattle the fruit bowl. Repeat at least a dozen times. Be bold, be committed. You are collaborating in this breaking and making. You are helping a thing become itself. When you're done, both of you get to rest for an hour. Make tea, hang up the damp towels, water your plants. Now when you circle back, the key is tenderness. Gently lift your dough, let it stretch, and then roll it into a coil like rolling up a sleeping bag after a summer night of stargazing. Give it a quarter turn, then lift and coil again. Turn, lift, and coil. Turn, lift, and coil. Let your hands know this partner. Rest for an hour and repeat. Rest another hour and repeat. Pay attention. It's critical for you to notice that each time you cycle through, the dough is more surely itself elastic and firm and separate from you. It steadies your lonely hands. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to Turnstone for this amazing opportunity and happy, happy birthday. Congratulations on a really spectacular run. Hi there. My name is Paul Pearson. Uh, I hope you're having a great day. I'm going to read for you two poems from my collection, Lunatic Engine, which was published by Turnstone Press in the fall of 2020. The first one is, Until I Have This From Your Lips, after Charles Bernstein. Every lip has a mouth, every mouth, a face by face, mouth by mouth. Every lip has a girl, every girl, a day, by day, girl by girl. Every lip has a sound, every sound a story, by story, sound by sound. Every lip has two, every two a four, two by four by two. I'll build you a house to hold your days, your face, your lips. Every lip has a revelation, every revelation a swelling belly, every belly a baby. I'll build you a house to hold your face, your mouth, I'll build you a house to hold your sound, your story, your word baby falling from your lips. I'll build our baby a house when I hear the word from your mouth, your lips. And the second poem I'll read for you is called Mechanics and it has two epigraphs. The first, she is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. And that's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 15. And the second epigraph, And what experiment teacheth us? From Galileo. What can be known by watching one body pass in front of another by passing your body in front of mine? What can be extrapolated by knowing the sun is a gong ringing in the airless ether, impossible music trapped in stained glass. What can be assumed by putting bodies into water, measuring how much water moves, like crossing water onto bodies, measuring what the body moves. What can be described by dropping things from towers, counting until they either hit or don't. Keep counting, because what can be halved can be halved again. The distance between two gravities geometrically reducing the distance between us. What can be measured by passing our bodies back and forth? Each time we come too close, we inscribe fractal patterns of desire into the very air, reaching out half the distance between us and half again, falling towards an inevitable mathematical consummation. Thank you very much.